Welcome. Thank you for joining with us tonight. We're so glad you're um, going to have a time of communion and worship together. Come join us for Good Friday. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned Hey, good evening, and thanks for joining us on this Good Friday. As we come together as family to remember what the Lord Jesus has done for us on this night. We remember his suffering. We remember his passion. We remember that he went to the cross because he loved us. And tonight we want to take these elements, the juice, the bread, and we want to remember his suffering on our behalf. So tonight, what I want to do is I want to share a few scriptures, give a little background, and then invite you to join with us in remembering the Lord Jesus and what he's done for us. So what I'm going to do is read a couple scriptures, and I'm beginning with Luke chapter 22, and it says in verse 13, it says, the disciples left and found things just as Jesus had told them. Remember, he told them to go out and, and find the elements and find all the, make preparations for the Passover. So they prepared the Passover. And when the hour came, Jesus and his disciples reclined at the table, and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. And after taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took the bread and he broke it. And he gave it to the disciples and he said, This is my body given for you. Do this, eat this, and each time you do, do it in remembrance of me. And then he took the bread, it says, and he gave thanks and he broke it. And he gave it to them saying, this is my body given for you. Do it in remembrance of me. And in the same way after the supper, he took the cup and said, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. So he took the bread and he took the cup and he sealed the covenant that he has with each one of us. It says that the disciples and Jesus were celebrating the Passover. 
And oddly enough, this is Passover week that we celebrate as well. It coincides with Good Friday and Easter. And Passover is a Jewish feast that has been celebrated for well over 3,300 years, commemorating how that God, way back in the days of Moses, delivered Israel out of slavery to Egypt. And he did it by taking the blood of the lamb and instructing the Israelites to put the blood of the lamb on the doorpost of their houses so that at night when the death angel passed over them, death would not come near them. Their lives would be spared. Slavery would end and they would be set free. Jesus, the Bible says, remember when John baptized Jesus at the beginning of his ministry? He said, look, there's the Lamb of God. Jesus came to fulfill all of the symbols of the Old Testament. And he came to fulfill each of the elements that was present on that Passover table. Everything that symbolized what God had done for Israel in the Passover, that original Passover. Now they were celebrating. Jesus said, remember that I am the fulfillment of this. And so he took the cup. And the cup that he took was the, the, the cup of redemption. And that was the cup that sealed the covenant with us. He took the bread. He took the bread that, that had to be quickly baked and had to, holes in it indicating that, that uh, well, it, the holes were there to make it bake quickly or grill quickly. Israel had to do that in order to get ready for the exodus out of Egypt. But Jesus is saying, I'm that bread. My body will be pierced. Those stripes on that bread. In fact, we have this bread here tonight. It has holes in it, has stripes on it. It's reminiscent of the same bread that, the, that they eat at Passover. He said, I'm representing that because, because I am the bread of life. I'm here to sacrifice myself for you. Why? Why did Jesus do it? He did it so that we would pass from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light that we would go from death to life and that we would no longer be slaves to sin. And he did it for us with a terrible cost, the sacrifice of his body on the cross, tasting death, enduring the wrath of God for all of us forever. In that one single sacrifice, he suffered and died to pay the penalty of our sin so that we could be set free. And Jesus said, every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, do it in remembrance of me. But tonight what I've decided is um, to read some scripture from Isaiah. And we're not going to drink from a cup. You can drink from a cup. But just for the purposes of our illustration, tonight we're going to, we're going to bite down on a grape. So let me read the words of Isaiah chapter 53 and you'll understand why we're eating a grape instead of drinking the cup because this also describes Jesus suffering on our behalf so in Isaiah chapter 53 it says he was a, a man despised and rejected a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering like one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. Now listen to these words in verse 4. Surely he took our infirmities and he carried our sorrows and we considered him stricken by God, smitten and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgression. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him and by his wounds we are healed. And so there it is the mention that his body would be pierced and he would be broken for our transgressions. And like a grape that we bite down on, thereby letting the juice run out, he was crushed not only for our iniquities but the Bible goes on to say that he was whipped and bruised, beaten and pierced, and by his stripes we are healed. So much more than symbolism. He came to be the actual fulfillment of this for us. 
And so tonight as we, as we take these elements, here's what I want you to do. I want you to remember that Jesus has paid the price once for all for your sin. Past, present, and future. You stand before God justified. And I like what I heard years ago. Someone said, God looks at us now because of Jesus just as if I'd never sinned. That's how God sees you. So we don't need to come to God and say, oh God, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Once is enough. God would much rather us come saying, thank you God for the forgiveness that comes through Jesus Christ. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for opening the door and making a way that I can have eternal life and I can be free from sin and you can give me a life that I've always dreamed of living. That's in this table tonight. But also because of what's going on in our world with this plague, we understand that God has been and continues to be a deliverer. He delivered Israel. He delivered us from our sin. But now we're asking as he has done before, God, would you deliver this world from this plague of coronavirus? I believe God is big enough and I think we need to ask big. Ask a prayer that's so big that only God can answer it. So God, come and heal not only our land, but heal this world. You've already made a way, God, through the blood that Jesus shed, through the stripes on his back. He paid punishment for our sin, but also to be the healer of our diseases. And just not just coronavirus, but all disease. God came, Jesus came, did miracles, healed people, sent the Holy Spirit all over this world and is our healer. Jesus, our healer, we believe that. So I'm gonna invite you right now, wherever you are, and I invite those friends of ours that are here tonight, if you would, just, if you have a cup, grab it. If you have a grape, grab a grape, that'd be great. That would be great. And I'm gonna pray over these elements and then we're gonna take them together. So would you pray with me? We love you, Jesus. We're so thankful. Thankful that you were willing. I read Max Licato this week. He said that even when the crunch of the sound of the apple was being bitten in Eden, you had already decided to come to Calvary to pay the price for all sin. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your willingness to suffer. Thank you for your willingness to forgive us. We remember your words from the cross, Jesus. You looked down at the people and you said, Father, forgive them because they just don't know what they're doing. And that, that just sounds so right today. We don't even know what we're doing, God. We need you and we thank you that you're there. We're thankful for the bread. We're thankful for the cup. And as we, as we bite down on this grape and we crush it, the skin of the grape being crushed and the juice pouring out. God, we're reminded of your suffering through Jesus Christ and the covenant now that we have because of him. And we rejoice in that and we're grateful for that and we're thankful for that. And we're ready to step out into the freedom that you offer us. And God, we ask not only do you help us to see our freedom, but God, would you heal us of all of our diseases, especially the coronavirus and all of its effects. We give you the praise and the glory for it now in Jesus' name. Would you take the bread with me? And then the grape. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Mm-hmm.
For tonight. We thank you for this night, God. Good Friday, God. We remember, God, your goodness extended towards us through the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, the perfect and the ultimate sacrifice for each and every single one of us, God. We thank you for your amazing grace that carries us no matter what is going on around us, no matter what season we find ourselves in. And we thank you for your salvation, God, your saving power, God, that saves us, that we can experience right here, right now, in this season, in this present circumstance, God, it's available to each and every one of us. We thank you for your great love that you have for us. And we love you, Jesus. Jesus. 